So today I'm going to share with you some of the best tips that you can get on how to attack in FC24 this year. Now one of the biggest problems that people have with attacking is not knowing what to do in the right situation. So essentially decision making. A lot of people often make the wrong decisions when they're attacking or they don't quite know what to do. One thing that we always suggest to people is if you can record your games, it's going to give you a massive advantage on other people if you are looking to get better at your attacking. And the reason is simple, because you're able to see things that you don't normally see in a game, and that then allows you to pick up certain tips and tricks that you can then employ in the future games. So this really shows a good goal on how we score from back to front and just passing the ball in defense. And in this situation right here, just a couple of simple passes. For starters, we always recommend going short with your goal kicks. Being able to just pass it in your box just always gives you control rather than punting the ball upfield. But a couple of passes left us a lot of space in this midfield area. And you can see, I believe this is Gundogan on the ball. And you can just see how much space we've got to be able to run into. Now, it's okay to sprint in midfield if there is a lot of space in front like there is here. But when you get close to somebody or if there's a lot of players around you, you shouldn't be sprinting and you need to get rid of that ball. So we end up sprinting forwards but when we get close to the opponent as you can see we end up just we're just going to end up passing the ball and get rid of that get rid of that ball why because if we take another heavy touch we're sprinting remember so you're going to take a heavy touch which is going to take it into the defender so all the defender has to do is literally just switch player and basically walk towards you just holding the left trigger making sure they're jockeying and they're going to take the ball off you and this is something that a lot of people do especially against me they run in midfield which is fine if you have open space but then they'll run too close to a defender and then it's easy for you to tackle so in this situation you've now got to get rid of the ball you're already sprinting you can't afford to take another sprinting sort of touch you've got to get rid of the ball and you can see we end up getting rid of the ball and he switched to his defender too late now if he'd have switched to his defender earlier rather than as late as he did he would have had a chance of getting the ball but now you can see how all of his midfield now is behind the play and you can just see in front of him all of the space that now we have to run into so we haven't actually done anything spectacular we've literally just played four very simple passes a little bit of sprinting in midfield to commit one of his, uh, his, his defenders to us and it's just left us so much space to be able to attack so now it's the same thing it's just rinse and repeat we can drive into that space with Gundogan we play the ball into Sane now this is another area where a lot of people make the wrong decision. This time the defender is a lot close to us. So if we take this ball with Sane and we try and turn and run into this space, the defender is quite close. So the defender could cut us off in this direction and could actually make the tackle. He could foul us and he could stop the counter attack. So this has a very low probability. This has a very low probability chance of actually succeeding if we try and take this ball and drive in here. So what you need to do is get rid of this ball first time to the fullback. And this is why I like attacking with fullbacks. You know, I like to get those fullbacks up because it just gives you more options when you're attacking. Now, granted, this might not always succeed. Obviously, this is Sane. He's got a really, I think he's got a two-star weak foot. So he actually makes a really poor pass. And he kind of scuffs the pass. But again, he overcommits with the defender. This was his defender. He overcommits with the defender. And now look at Sane. He's got all this space in behind to be able to exploit. So this guy's constantly behind the play, and this was why it was so easy to attack. We just dissected him, but made decisions really quick, and this is key. We was able to dissect what was happening and make decisions fast, and you either kind of have that or you don't. You can learn it, you can sort of teach yourself, but you've got to be able to make decisions quick. And you can probably already tell what we're going to do. We're going to play that ball in behind to Sane, obviously, in behind to this space. We've already, in this situation, we've already decided what I'm going to do next. And a lot of people would probably think you may be going to turn back inside and pass the ball, or maybe you're going to go down to the wing and then you're going to look for a, a cutback to somebody. We've already decided what we're going to do. And it's actually Lewandowski right here. You can see that he's in between the right back and the centre back. So I've already decided that I'm going to put this ball in and cross this ball. And that's the thing, you have to be able to make that decision very quick. Of course, this all happens in half a second. You just glance up, 
to Lewandowski and we saw that he was in acres of space and that gave us the best opportunity to have a chance at goal. If we tried to turn back inside, with this defender coming across and him on this defender, there's a good chance that he could close the angles down and again, potentially tackle us, potentially foul us or whatever it may be. So you have to be able to dissect what's happening really quickly and that's what we did with Lewandowski. We ended up playing that ball across to Lewandowski, playing that cross in behind. But this is why recording your games is so important because what I didn't see until actually after I clipped this was Gundogan, I believe it is, here. So I actually could have passed this ball back across to Gundogan for an easy tap-in. I didn't see this at the time. My intention was to cross the ball from Sane to Lewandowski and then hit that ball first time, which is exactly what we did with Lewandowski. But if we just roll it back, you can see that we actually had a pass across goal to Gundogan that we could have played. Gundogan was right there for a tap-in. We'd have just played a simple Y pass or a simple A pass. We could have passed that ball across for an, a simple goal. Later on in the game cycle, if that's a, a Yashin, if that's a Schmeichel, if that's an Allison, a Courtois, a better keeper than someone like Onana might save it. We might hit the post. And if this is a clutch game, you can see we're winning 4-2. But if this was the other way around and we was 4-2 down and missed this chance, a lot of people here would be complaining, oh, the keeper saved it, my guy's rubbish, whatever it may be. When in fact, by recording our gameplay, we was able to see, hey, next time I get into this situation, there's a, a pass that I can make. There might be another pass. You've got to be able to make that decision very, very quickly. Again, another example this time of us building up from the back, this time with the opponent pressing us. And this is a question that we obviously get asked a lot is, how do you play against the press? And this really demonstrates how you play against the press. The first thing you have to do is you have to play one touch. You can't afford to take a touch. You've got to be able to pass the ball instantly. So before it comes to the guy that you're, you know, that, that you're receiving the ball from. So in this situation, when the ball was coming across the box, I already knew straight away that I was going to probably pass the ball backwards. Intentionally, I was going to try and pass it back to the centre back from the full back or I was going to go all the way back to the goalkeeper. You've got to know these things ahead of time. And this is something that just comes with practice. But for starters, you have to play one touch. You can't afford to let this attacker get on top of you because they could throw you out the way. They could, you know, use the strength to get the ball off you. So you've got to play one touch when someone's pressing you high. And we end up passing that ball all the way back to Unistall. And again, uh, Unistall gets the ball and just first time just passes it straight away. Don't take a touch. You know, because what you're going to do is you're going to force your opponent to start panic switching all the time. You're going to force him to get more aggressive, try and get even close to you. And then it's going to make it even easier to beat the press. So first time we uh, we passed that ball with Unistall into the centre back. Turn with, I think that was Pedri actually that we turned with, into, into Chalmany. And again, straight away, Chalmany gets rid of the ball. Defender is right on top of him. Defender's pressing him, as you can see. That's not a very good circle. But you can see that the uh, defender is right on top of him, pressing him. So what we need to do is if we give this ball back straight away to Pedri, Pedri's going to have all of this space to be able to run into because this midfielder, this one right here, has vacated that space by trying to press Chalmany. And you can see that actually when Pedri does receive the ball back again, you can see all the space now that's opened up in that midfield. And then it's just rinse and repeat. This defender, you can see on a, on a little run, trying to come and press us. So straight or straight away, before we even don't even give them chance to come and press you and try and get the ball off you, we just get rid of that ball straight away. Get rid of that ball straight away to Gundogan. And now look at Gundogan. And as we went back to the first clip, when you've got space in front of you, as Gundogan has here, it's okay to sprint because there's no risk. So Gundogan is now able to sprint in that midfield, play it up to Kimmich. And this time Kimmich gets the ball. But again, this is where decision making is really, really key because we're able to make the correct decision. And this is why decision making is really, really key because you've got to be able to analyze what's going on whilst also keeping an eye on your player, and making sure you don't get rid of the ball. So we obviously didn't have a pass. We didn't, we couldn't cut this ball back to Sane because he's obviously marking that lane very, very well. So he's doing a good job there. And then at the top of the pitch, Lewandowski is locked up with the defender. So you only have one choice. And that one decision is just to drive into this space and make him bring somebody to come in, you know, take the ball off you. Make him make your decision for you. So we drive forwards with Kimmich. And as you can see, there's still no space, still no one's opened up. And then when we actually get to this point in time, he starts dropping off expecting the cutback, which is actually the correct way to defend in this situation. So all you have to do is just keep going. 
keep going towards the byline. And cutbacks, again, are one of the most effective ways to score this year. I'd probably say they're certainly the most effective way. I'd say maybe up there with crossing. Cutbacks is definitely very, very effective. So you just have to keep driving into this space and wait for someone to open up. And in this situation, we keep driving, we keep driving. And now you get into the sort of this position right here. Now you have to make a decision. Now the decisions are, can we shoot with Kimmich? Well, that's a really low percentage chance. You know, he might parry it into, into your path. He might put it behind for a corner. Really low percentage chance. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. Maybe if this was like a left-footed player, you could sort of take a touch inside maybe and then try and maybe shoot one in goal but i wouldn't recommend doing that at all what we actually try to do is pass this ball across here now that's not with an a pass that's with a y pass because you can't play that ball with an a pass because you play that ball with an a pass it's going to play it there defender's got a chance to intercept it you play a y pass here a through ball one of these guys might have a chance of running onto it and then having that shot at goal which is exactly what we try and do. We try and play that wide pass. The defender comes in to, uh, to cut across. Then the ball luckily deflects back to Kimmich. We play that wide pass again this time. And this time, obviously, we have that open net now that the keeper is committed. Because that's something a lot of people like to do in this situation as well. When you get to these tight angles, some people like to rush the keeper out. Because everybody's eyes are looking back to the penalty spot. So they're not actually looking at the player and sometimes you can catch people off guard if you try and rush the keeper and the keeper can sometimes get there and steal the ball off the attacker. But this time obviously it didn't work and uh, it, we ended up getting the ball across and then getting that tap in. It's actually a no-look shot from Pedri. So being able to make the right decisions in the right time is very key and this time we're going to flip it on its head. This time it's us doing the pressing. So he obviously tries to go short and that's not a, re a way I would always recommend going short. If you're going to go short, I always recommend bringing your defenders into your own box. I see a lot of people try and make this pass over here. This is just an easy way to intercept with your striker. You know, I would always recommend as well, if you're trying to press in this situation, I'd always go to the fullback anyway, because you're never gonna you're never gonna get there and get to the centre back in time. So I always recommend pressing out there. But if you're gonna go short, always make sure you bring your defenders in close so you've got have a hundred percent chance of obviously making that pass. But he goes to that area and that instantly just puts him under pressure. We almost get there with Lewandowski and then he does the right thing. He passes it back first time, you know, he goes back to Inanna and then again, he plays that, that pass, but we're already anticipating this ball. You can see how close we've got with Sane. So if he doesn't pass this ball, you know, first time round the corner, what he actually should do is pass this back to Onana because if he tries and plays this round the corner, there's a good chance Sane could potentially intercept it. So we're pressing well. This is just manual press. This is not using press on possession loss, which I don't really recommend because it can just... You want to press with your players. You don't want the, the AI to press and, and pull your team out of position, and that's why some people can concede some really cheap goals. So we're pressing really well in this situation. He does risk it round the corner, and actually on this occasion... It does work, but now obviously a little bit of second man press. You can see we're second man pressing with Lewandowski and manually pressing with Sane. So we're really closing the space on him very, very quickly. He should have passed this ball back to the keeper. Now he's got himself in a lot of trouble and we actually win that ball then with with uh, with Lewandowski, I think, well, with Sane to Lewandowski. And now he's just going to panic. You know, he's behind the play. You can see he's obviously controlling the wrong player in this situation but it's three on two and you just got to right again make the right decision in this situation so you can drive this ball with Lewandowski or you can go out wide to I think it was Pedro Gonçalves in this situation that we ended up doing so we make that correct pass with Pedro Gonçalves and then the last thing that we want to really highlight is finishing now finishing is really really important because it's all well and good you know, pressing well and creating the right chances and making the correct decisions. This is, again, the last part we want to highlight with decision-making. And sometimes people, most most people would obviously play sort of a finesse shot. It's a really terrible arrow. Most people would play, obviously, a finesse shot into that sort of far post. Now, what one finish that I found this year that's really, really effective is actually a bit of almost like a reverse shot to this near post. It seems to work very, very effectively. And the reason why it works is because the goalkeeper tends to really lean towards that far side of the goal. He really sticks his arm out quite far. And especially higher-end goalkeepers, you know, especially big goalkeepers like your, your Courtois or your Schmeichels or whoever, have actually ha seem to be quite effective at making those sort of saves. So I actually find that because the keeper doesn't actually seem to stick his arm out uh, to this near side, 
actually that reverse finish is very very effective if you've got an Mbappe or someone that you're really confident with yeah that will work but also just making sure that you make the right decision with your finishes is is obviously very very key and obviously Gonsalves whips that ball to the near post and we actually get the finish so Really, this was just about highlighting the main thing with decision making. You know, you don't need to overcomplicate it with Traveller shots or certain skill moves, anything quote unquote meta. The reason why I never suggest learning quote unquote meta is because meta can get patched. And if things get patched, if your game is reliant on whatever's broken and that thing gets patched, you're back to square one. You know, you kind of, you're not able to play the game properly. So really important that you build the foundations and the fundamentals of playing first before you try and obviously, then you can add those things onto your game afterwards. You know, there are sort of the trimmings. You shouldn't really build your game around abusing meta because when it gets patched, you kind of screw and you're back to square one. But you can see in a lot of these clips here that we didn't use anything fancy, no fancy skill moves, not necessarily using anything broken. Just passing and moving is really more than enough for to be able to play this game. As long as you're not trying to go for 18, 19, 20 wins, you don't necessarily need the broken meta. And, you know, using players like Pedro Gonçalves, you don't need the most meta players either. You, you know, unless you're going and playing elite division or unless you're going for 20 wins, you don't need those top tier players. So making sure that you have those good foundations, those good fundamentals that we've shown and highlighted in this sort of live video really will give you an edge on playing this year in FC24.